What's up guys, Tavin here, back again with another episode of Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. So, in the last episode, we gained the ability of Sweet Treat, which is a special move Mario can use now, using the power of the um, magical map. And we are also pointed into the general direction that we should be looking towards in order to find the next, or to find the way to the first Crystal Star down here in the pipe. So we also got the paper airplane ability, but before we do that, I actually want to go back to this left hand side, which I didn't show you guys earlier, just because it wasn't as prevalent to go over then as it is right now. Um, if you actually talk to this guy over here, his name is Dazzle, and he collects the star pieces that we find, and he will trade you them in order to give you badges. And this guy is actually the one who I want to talk to in order to get certain badges that I want, and that I kind of need to fill out. So. Here is the list of badges that um, he can trade you for star pieces. Um, you can get as much as you can as long as you have enough star points to get it. The main ones I want to focus on is getting uh, Quick Change and possibly even Peekaboo. Peekaboo basically does what Goombella does this without the whole wasting her turn to do it. And then the Quick Change badge lets you swap partners within the same turn without them wasting their turn. Uh, Merlovely over here is a fortune teller who, if you ever get stuck or anything like that, she will give you hints on what to do next in order to figure out where to go. Um, I believe she has three tiers of charging you. Oh, no, no, no. She tells you where things are. Well, actually, no, that's partially right. So the next path, she'll tell you, like, where you should go next in order to do it. Star pieces, general, like, hey, there are star pieces here. And then shine sprites, this is where they're located. And um, I'll go over star sprites when we get into them, when we start collecting them in the next two or three parts. But anyway, if we have to come behind here, there's another star piece. So yeah, we're going to hold on to that for right now. And I'm going to sail up in order to get a quick change badge. So that's going to be the first thing I want to get from. So yeah, uh, moving forward, we're going to go ahead and utilize the paper airplane ability we gained from the curse box in the last episode in order to come over here. Oh, but first, I do want to fight this guy just so I can take his experience. And now we will go back over there and actually get into um, the quote-unquote boss fight for this, um, for the prologue, I should say. That's what it's called. So see a little tentacle over here. What else are we going to do but uh, knock it? So blurb, blurb, that hurt. And if you guys still have the flower uh, fire flower that we collected um, in episode one, this is the fight where you really want to use it because it's going to make the most sense and it makes this fight so much easier and honestly like just this fight's already easy enough without it but having it just makes it that he, he won't even touch you at this point so yeah so the first boss is going to be a blooper a really big blooper to give it that too so first and foremost what I want to do is switch um, to, yeah, what she's saying right here, we press the Y button to switch uh, who's in front because that person will probably be taking the brunt of the enemy's attacks, but the reason why I'm doing it is just so I can have Gumbella go first, so she can go ahead and use her tackle ability, so I can get a good size up of who he is, and that's Blooper, he's a really super humongous one, two, ew, it's all slimy, I just totally can't stand slimy, nasty, icky things, G-R-O-S-S, -S, gross. Max HP is 12, attack is 1, and defense is 0, it attacks with tentacles and ink. Once you damage both its tentacles, it'll fall down, and then it's attack time. By the way, the tentacles each have 3 HP each. Now relax and house that slimy nasty blooper. So, here is where I want to use the fire flower because it actually deals 3 points of damage to every enemy on the screen. So that'll be enough to take out the tentacles and damage the main body, which will bring it down to 9 HP, and once he falls down, then I am free to start attacking him both with Mario and Goombella again and that's just going to take him down and it's going to take him another turn just to get back up and then he'll try to attack and at that point it's already going to be too late and I'm already going to get my stuff in because I want to utilize the power badge as well that we got Professor Frankly in order to get a good hit in and almost got a bingo on that one basically what those things are depending on which items you line up it'll increase either your HP with mushrooms your FP with the flowers uh, star power with the star icon if you get the shine sprite icon it will increase HP FP and um, the star points and if you get three poison mushrooms in a row it will decrease all of your points by half so you really don't want that so anyway with him defeated we are actually now able to go to the pathway leading into chapter one 
but I am going to save that for the next video because I want this to be like the last episode for the prologue before we start switching it up and start doing the chapter one videos. So instead, what I'm going to do is now do some extra stuff here that I still can do. Um, over here, this guy here, Gus, who is passing, uh, blocking our way over there, we have three options. We can either pay him money to pass through, we can not pay him at all, or we can just straight up fight him. And the fighting him option, it's a little bit, it's not that hard, but it's a little bit tricky for this early on when you're only level one. But honestly, like, if you just utilize your items and um, your badge points moves, he is a pretty easy customer to deal with. So this is Gus, he's a super annoying and tries to take tolls from everyone. Max HP is 20, attack is 3, and defense is 0. All in all, he's pretty rough. Oh, and I've told you a million times that Pony Spear of his hurts if you stomp on it. So he does count as a spiked enemy while his spear is pointing upwards, but in this version um, of this character, we will fight other characters that are similar set up like this, and they'll actually make their spears go down, but for this one, he always keeps it up. So for the most part, Goombella is pretty useless because her head bonk ability will only get her attacked. So she's mainly, nah, mainly going to be on support to heal Mario or um, help me increase his FP. But thankfully, I got a mushroom bingo, so I'm just going to recover those 2 HP that I lost. So not really as much of anything. Also, when you get a bingo, uh, it will slightly fill up your stage. Um, as we get to higher levels, when we level up, it will increase our stage cap for how many people are going to be in our audience. And what that does is it just makes it so that when we appeal to the crowd in order to uh, gain more um, points, when we actually utilize our special ability with our special move, it'll fill it up a little quickly. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, so already he's like down to half health already and we have barely taken like any damage at all. So. Of course, if you go to tactics, this is another menu I didn't really go over in the early episodes. Uh, you can choose to defend, which will increase your defense by one point, so you're basically bracing for the impact of an attack. Or you can select the appeal option, which basically just has them, you know, uh, acknowledge the crowd and try to, you know, get some feedback from them to raise your star power. And of course, since a bucket fell out off the stage and it hit me and I didn't like guard it in time, I did get dizzy from it, and that tends to happen sometimes when you're appealing. And I don't know why, but sometimes it, it can happen to you by chance, but it can also happen to like the enemies as well. Um, so since this is early on, he will give you a warning like when you get down into like the um, the danger zone for your health that you know like you can't beat me, so you might as well run. Running is also a viable action, otherwise you're gonna die. But I have like three mushrooms, so I could always heal myself. But instead, I decide to use the sweet treat action command just because I haven't shown it off yet. So I want you guys to see how it works. So by pressing left on the analog stick, you can shoot hearts, or you can shoot um, stars in order to hit flower or HP icons in order to refill your BP or HP depending on whose icon you hit. And if you hit the poison mushroom, it will stun you for a little bit, making so that you can't really throw any more stars for a little bit. But basically with that whole one, we managed to fill up everything again, so HP, FP, all filled up, and now we have to work to filling up our star gauge again by getting appeals from the crowd and building up our stage presence that you get more SP. But already, Gus is almost done. This isn't a super terrible fight. I'm still level one, so actually no, I think, yeah, I'm still level one, so this isn't hard. It's definitely doable. You just gotta be smart about how you actually do stuff and utilize your BP points well. Um, sorry, your HP points. FP points well, and he gives us a good chunk of star points, which is why I like to do it early, just so I can like level up a little faster. Crud, you dumb video game heroes always pull this stuff. It's ridiculous. You think violence solves everything, don't you? Huh? Don't you? And of course he runs away. So with that, we now have access to this area of the hub world without having to pay any more money. So that is a plus. Uh, there's really nothing we can do here. I honestly just did that just to increase the length of the video, just to pad out the time. Because honestly, at this point, there's nothing else you're missing, so if you actually want to skip ahead to the next video, I won't blame you. There isn't much else I'm going to be doing but just some extra side stuff and flavor text and just talking in general in order to cover it. Because these two uh, houses over here, they're locked. Uh, the one on the left is for a party member that we'll meet later on, and the one on the right is for uh, the Trouble Center, which is going to be a side quest area that we are going to be utilizing later on, much later on in the story, like I think by like chapter 5 or 6, that's when that comes into play. 
but I think it opens up after chapter four. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's chapter four that when it opens up. Anyway, uh, now we're actually going to go over and explore the other areas that I kind of just glanced over as soon as we started. So here is the bar. This will not become prevalent story-wise until chapter five. Yep, chapter five. I definitely remember that one. That's <laughs> that's uh, one of my favorite chapters. It's not my all-time favorite chapter of this game, but it's one. It's up there. Um, so yeah, you can meet and talk to these characters, but like I said, they're not too heavy until chapter five when they actually start doing shit that matters. But this is actually how you get to the inn. Um, if you go up to the stairs on the left hand start, like left hand side, like the bartender over here is saying, you'll reach the upstairs area, which is actually the inn where. You know, Toadsworth is just staring at, oh, where in the world could Princess Peach have gotten to? This is quite troubling indeed. So if you just talk to that orange toad over there, she'll hook you up with a bed, and it'll cost like five coins in order for you to stay there. Come out the door to the left-hand side, there is a badge shop right here, and these badges will rotate frequently, like every time you leave a uh, rogue port in order to go to like a different um, chapter or whatnot, these badges will change out. So always check the store often. If you ever want a specific badge, you can just walk up to it. It'll tell you how much it costs, what its effect is, and if you want it, just press A and you'll buy it. Um, after you give one more confirmation screen. So for the most part, I will try to collect all these at some point. That is my goal. Will it still be while I'm recording videos for this channel, pr um, uh, for this series? Probably not. But at some point, I will have all of them. And when I do, I will try to show you. Uh, piercing blow, that's a pretty good one. I, it's just that I don't have that much money and I kind of want to save up my money because there is something I want to do later on that involves me investing 100 coins into a character that we're actually about to see down at the docks. So, yeah. I bought that one badge just because the power uh, jump, pretty much like the power smash, but it is for your boots instead. Um, we already have the contact lenses waiting, so that's still in the process of coming through for us, so at least we start it now, so we'll be done by the time we get there. But yeah, um, if we come down back to the harbor where we first rolled in and go to the right hand, yeah, the right hand side, there's going to be a green radish looking character, which we'll talk to later. Uh, who me? I'm a okay, so this character, yeah, like, like I just said literally, like, two minutes ago back with chapter five that's when these characters here will really start to like shine the rope port guys really don't do much up until chapter five and that's when like they become a bit more prevalent for just that chapter only the beginning part of it honestly the rest of the time they're just npcs just walking about their time just fulfilling the world making it feel lived in and all that good stuff um, one thing that I missed that they didn't bring back in this game is there is no, um, kind of like fast moving option. Well, mm, no, I do stand by that. So like how in the first game, if you press the Z button, you can like do a little spin twirling thing with Mario to make him move faster. They completely got rid of that in this game and instead that kind of move is now switched out with an ability that one of our future partners is going to be able to do, but we won't see him until chapter 4. Yeah, chapter 4. Wait. No, he's chapter 3. Yeah, he's chapter 3, so I get to see him soon, because I'm almost at that cha uh, chapter for recording-wise. So yeah, when I get 100 coins, I will come back to invest it into that green rat, and I'll show you guys as soon as I get that. Um, probably in the next couple videos when we're in chapter one. But for the most part, that is pretty much everything I want to show you guys. So I think this is probably going to be a good place to end off the video. So yeah. So again, I apologize that I'm mostly just stalling and just did a whole bunch of flavor stuff just for, you know, just fill out this video. But come part four, we will move on into the start of chapter one. So, until then, this has been Tevin, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. So, until then, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know how your day is going down in the comment section below. Until then, I will see you guys later, and here are my current stats for Mario right now, with 10 HP, 5 FP, and 3 BP, as well as time and coins I have. So, yeah, so now you know how things are going. So, until then, I'll see you guys next time, so take care everyone.